General Motors has gone bankrupt. It's a historic moment for the American auto major, but also for the entire... It didn't happen overnight. General Motors, once the symbol of American strength, has been quietly bleeding behind the scenes. A $5 billion collapse in China, the quiet cancellation of its hydrogen project, and a $1.1 billion loss blamed on tariffs, each piece revealing a company slowly losing its grip. Now, they claim a breakthrough is coming. A new battery made with manganese, cheaper and more powerful than lithium iron phosphate. It sounds bold. It sounds desperate. Because when a giant starts to fall, it rarely shouts. It whispers. And right now, GM is whispering something we can't afford to ignore. Let's dive in. China falls quiet. For decades, China was supposed to be the prize. A growing middle class, massive demand, and a hunger for cars that once seemed endless. For General Motors, it was more than just a market. It was a second heartbeat. They moved fast, partnered with local companies, and for a while, it worked. Sales boomed. Profits soared. China became GM's largest market, even bigger than the United States. But empires don't crumble with headlines. They slip, inch by inch. By the end of last year, GM quietly wrote down $5.1 billion from its Chinese business. No press tour, no bold explanations. Just a note in their financials, like closing a door they no longer wanted to walk through. The reasons were layered. Economic slowdown, intense competition, and a wave of Chinese EV makers offering more range for less money. But behind it all was something harder to name. They lost touch. While others adapted, GM held on to old models, familiar strategies. And slowly, the market moved on without them. What's haunting isn't just the financial loss. It's the silence that followed. A once unstoppable presence, now fading quietly in a country where it once ruled the roads. There were no loud exits, just numbers, and then none. It's easy to underestimate what that means. But in the world of global industry, a retreat like this sends signals, not just to competitors, but to investors, partners, and the people within. When a giant stumbles, it doesn't always fall. Sometimes it just stops growing. And that, too, is a kind of collapse. Blame and billion-dollar losses. In July, another crack appeared. General Motors reported a 32% drop in profits for the second quarter of the year. That's over a billion dollars gone, $1.1 billion to be exact. But they didn't just report the loss. They pointed backward, toward old policies, old headlines. They blamed tariffs, tracing the damage all the way back to the Trump administration's trade war with China. There may be some truth to it. Tariffs changed the math for many manufacturers. Supply chains buckled, costs rose, but that was years ago. And companies that adapted early are now ahead. GM isn't. They're behind and falling further. Blame feels easy now, convenient, especially when the numbers won't stop bleeding. But for those watching closely, it doesn't explain enough. The deeper issue isn't the tariffs, it's the hesitation. The slow pivot to electric. The scattered bets are across too many technologies. The sense that GM isn't steering the change, just chasing it. That's what makes this loss feel different. Not just the money, but the mood around it. There's a kind of weariness in their message. As if even they know this isn't the last bad quarter. As if hope is becoming a line item, like any other. When a company this size starts pointing fingers, it's rarely just about politics. It's about pressure and fear. The kind that doesn't always show up in press releases, but you can hear it quietly, 
between the lines. Canceling hydrogen, reviving V8s. There was a time when hydrogen was supposed to be the answer. Clean, abundant, futuristic. General Motors had invested years and millions into developing hydrogen fuel cell systems. They spoke of trucks powered by nothing but vapor, of a future free from carbon and compromise. But in early 2025, that future vanished. No announcement, no bold headline. The project was quietly shut down. The factory, once built to shape tomorrow, now stands as a symbol of something else, unrealized ambition. In its place, GM made a surprising move, a $900 million investment into new V8 engines. Not hybrids, not plug-ins, just pure combustion. It's a strange kind of pivot. At a moment when much of the industry is racing toward electrification, GM reached back into its past. Big, rumbling engines for trucks and SUVs. Vehicles that still sell, still make money, still feel familiar. And maybe that's the point. When the future feels uncertain, familiarity becomes a lifeline. V8s are not visionary, but they are reliable, known, profitable. And in times of financial pressure, Sometimes, survival matters more than innovation. Still, the contrast is hard to ignore. One foot on the gas, one foot chasing electric promises. The message is split. A cancelled hydrogen dream. A revived gasoline engine. It paints a picture not of strategy, but of hesitation. A company torn between what it should become and what it already knows how to build. And in that hesitation, you can feel the weight of doubt. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The LMR promise. Amid the chaos, General Motors offered a lifeline, at least on paper. A new battery technology. A new acronym. LMR, Lithium Manganese Rich. It was introduced not with fanfare, but with intent. According to the GM, this was the chemistry that could tip the scales. LMR would be cheaper than lithium iron phosphate, more energy dense, easier to source, a breakthrough without the baggage. The promise is striking. With fewer expensive metals like nickel and cobalt, and a heavier reliance on manganese, a metal far more abundant and less politically entangled, GM claims they can reduce costs dramatically. CEO Mary Barra says LMR cells may even be more affordable than LFP at today's raw material prices. That's not a small claim. If true, it would mean longer range at lower cost and the potential to finally compete with China's low-cost EV manufacturing edge. But there's something about the timing that raises questions. These announcements came just as losses were mounting. Billions gone. Projects shelved, doubts growing, and then, suddenly, a chemistry no one else has mastered might save everything. The details remain vague. No production model, no delivery timeline sooner than 2027, no public testing results, just confidence. And when companies start speaking in projections instead of products, it's often because the real story isn't ready yet. Or worse, it may not be real at all. That's what makes LMR feel less like a solution and more like a distraction. A well-crafted hope sold to buy time. A battery that might just change the game or might only exist to keep the lights on a little longer. Either way, GM is betting on a battery it hasn't built yet. Manganese versus lithium phosphate. It all comes down to chemistry. On one side, lithium iron phosphate, LFP. Cheap, safe, stable. That's why Chinese automakers use it in everything from budget sedans to electric buses. It doesn't go as far, but it works. And it works now. On the other side, GM's bet. 
Lithium manganese rich. LMR promises more energy in less space. Greater range. Lighter vehicles. They say it could even be cheaper than LFP, thanks to the falling price of manganese and the removal of costly elements like cobalt and nickel. On paper, it's a clear win. But if it's so superior, why hasn't it taken over? That's the question the GM hasn't answered. Because while they talk up LMR's potential, they're building entire plants to manufacture LFP cells. Their Spring Hill factory in Tennessee is being converted to produce LFP by 2027. Their upcoming Silverado EV and the next Chevy Bolt will both launch with lithium phosphate, not manganese-rich packs. It doesn't add up. If LMR is better and cheaper, why isn't it first? Maybe the chemistry isn't ready. Maybe the savings aren't real. Or maybe LMR is just another pitch meant to buy time. Because in this race, what works today matters more than what might work tomorrow. And for GM, tomorrow is arriving fast. The strange bet on two futures. Something is unsettling about watching a company hedge its own belief. GM says LMR is the breakthrough, the battery that will lift them from the edge and carry them into the next era. Yet at the same time, they're pouring resources into LFP, the chemistry they claim will soon be outperformed. The Spring Hill factory isn't a backup plan. It's a major investment, set to begin production in 2027. That's the same year GM says it will start producing LMR batteries through its joint venture with LG Energy Solution. Two timelines. Two technologies. One company is trying to cover every base. It feels less like a plan and more like uncertainty made visible. The Silverado EV, launching with LFP, promises 350 miles of range. The LMR-equipped version, they say, will push past 400. But no one's seen those cells in the real world. And even if they deliver the range, questions remain about charging speed, longevity, and safety. It's hard to escape the thought that GM doesn't fully trust its bet, that LMR is more ambition than reality, at least for now. So they fall back on LFP just in case. Not because it's better, but because it's real. And real is what they need. Would you like to move on to the outro? General Motors is standing at a crossroads, caught between what it dreams and what it dares to build. LMR batteries might be the future, but right now, they're still just blueprints and promises. The money is running thin. The markets are watching. And every move feels like a gamble. Maybe they'll pull it off. Maybe they'll lead a new chapter in American manufacturing. Or maybe this is how a legacy fades. Not with a crash, but with quiet uncertainty. Because sometimes, survival isn't about innovation. It's about timing, and the GM is running out of both. Thanks for watching. Stay curious.